is holy, he is righteous, he is faithful, and he has been all that in all of our lives. Better than the hand claps we give him, better than even the hand waves. He's worthy of all of the praise. He's worthy of all of the glory. He's worthy of every hallelujah. He's worthy of every glory to you. He's worthy of so much more. We can never thank him enough. We can never say hallelujah to you enough, Jesus. But we want to try this morning just to show you a token of our love, God. Of our appreciation, Lord. Of our gratefulness to you, Jesus. Because you have been righteous. You have been faithful. You have been holy in our lives. And you've shown us holiness, God. And for that we give you glory. And we give you praise. And we say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just lift up a hallelujah on one of us? up a hallelujah to Jesus, not to me, but to Jesus, to our Father, to our King, to our great Savior, who died by our sins, who delivered us from our sins, hallelujah, he's won the victory for you and for me, hallelujah, Jesus, we just give you the highest praise, Lord, highest praise is hallelujah. Come on and slip your hands up before the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God, we love you today. We magnify you, God. Thank you that you won the victory, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name, God. We love you, God. We exalt you this morning, God. Nobody compares to your greatness, your glory, your mercy, God, your kindness, God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name. We bless you, God. We honor you, God. Glory to your name, Jesus. We worship you this morning with our whole heart, God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Yeah. 
worship you. We worship and magnify your name, God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Continue to worship the Lord. Glory to your name, Jesus. Come on, let's just bless him with the fruit of our lips. Hallelujah. Come on, let's do it with the fruit of our lips. Let's give him the glory. Let's give him all the honor. He deserves it. God deserves your praise. He deserves to be glorified. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no one like you, Jesus. Oh. Glory to your name, Jesus. We praise you, God. In spite of what we experience, God, in spite of what we have to go through, God, that you can get the glory, God. We glorify your name, God. We magnify you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. My soul bless you, God. My soul adores your name, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God with the fruit of our lips, with no assistance. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. No assistance. Hallelujah. Let's just open up our mouth and give God some praise. No music. Hallelujah. Let's just give God some glory with our mouths. Hallelujah. He's been just that good. Hallelujah. That we don't have to rely. Hallelujah. On hallelujah. The music. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we can give God praise with the fruit of our, our mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's glorify him. He deserves it. Hallelujah. He's been too good. He's been too kind to us. He's been merciful. Hallelujah. God, you deserve the praise. You deserve the glory. There's nobody like you, God. Hallelujah. You're the lover of our soul. You are the great I am. You are the bright and morning star, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The angels cry holy. You're a holy God and you're righteous. And you're magnificent in all your ways. Hallelujah. Jesus. God, we honor you today, God. We honor you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what he wants. He wants, hallelujah, our praises. Hallelujah. He wants to be glorified. He wants to be honored, hallelujah, on today. And you, you deserve it, God. You deserve it. You deserve my praise. You deserve my worship. Hallelujah. I don't know where I would be without you, God. I know I'd be on my way to a dying hell, God. But thank you that you looked beyond my fault and you saw my need, a need to save a wretch like me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We just worship you, God, and we magnify your holy name. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Praise is calmly for the upright. Hallelujah. So let's just glorify him. Hallelujah. You're deserving of the glory, God. Hallelujah. Death could not hold you down. We should be excited about that alone. Hallelujah. Death could not hold you down. No, you are the risen King. You're seated in majesty. For you are the 
bless you are. Hallelujah. Let's just bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're our risen king. You're our savior. You're our heart fix, our mind regulator. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you, God. We give you the glory that you deserve today, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We say yes to your will and your way, God. We trust you and obey, God. Hallelujah. What a lovely God. Somebody just blow him a kiss. So worthy. So holy and righteous. you feel his presence and just give him a wave off God we just take time out to love on you God we move the program out the way and we just want to love on you because you are so worthy God you've been good to us God such a wonderful counselor mighty God prince of peace he's the God of peace saints He's a God of love. Hallelujah. He's a God of comfort. And he supplies all I need. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just give him your best, best praise right now. Come on, all over the building, just give God your best praise. Hallelujah. 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 that we give just to help those that are in need, to help our ministers get this gospel out there to the lost, those that are out of the way. And we want to remind you to bring your canned goods, your grain offering, meats, so that we can put them in the storehouse. And we're just going to continue to in praise and in worship and in song, even as different ones bring their outreach offering. Please stand. Even if you're not giving giving in the outreach, we want to ask everyone to stand and we want to reverence the Lord inside of this offering. And the hospitations will guide you once you're ready to come from the rear. Bless you, Lord. Even if you're not giving, please stand with us today. Hallelujah, Jesus.
death could not hold you down. You are the risen King, seated in majesty. You Michael Thomas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Baby, you'll turn me up a little bit. Hallelujah. Let's give God a praise. Come on, let's give God a real praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we lift your name. I found a Savior. He's sweet, I know. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Saints, it's so sweet to be saved. I said it's so sweet to be saved. It's a good thing. Being saved is a good thing. And being in pursuit of the heart of God is a very good thing. <clears throat> I thank God for, for the Holy Ghost tonight. I thank God for vision. I thank God for how, the, for the things that he has revealed to me concerning his people. There's some of you that are really, really seeking the heart and mind of God. You're seeking after God's heart. You want to be, you want to be what he has ordained you to be. And that's a blessing, saints. It's a blessing that you will even seek the Lord like that. Because there's so many saints, so many Christians are not seeking the Lord for his heart. They're not seeking after God's heart. So many are beguiled and seeking after the pleasures of men, the desire of man. But to seek after God's heart is a blessing because God is drawing us. He's drawing us to him. He's drawing us into the spirit, you know, deeper into the spirit. And that, that is a monumental blessing. Everyone cannot lay claim to that. Because God said something in his word that is so, so evident. He said, I know those that are mine. 
I know those that are mine. Hallelujah. You know, with his foresight, he knows those that will seek after him, and he knows those who, who will reject him. Glory to God. And as Paul said, or Peter, one of them said, we're not as, we're not as those that draw back to perdition. That's Peter, I believe. But those who move forward all the way to the saving of the soul. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to hang here. We're going to hang in here until we know our soul is secure. Isn't that right? Till we, till we made it in. I, I want to hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. You know, and that day won't be long. That day is fast approaching, saints. It's fast approaching. Um, we don't have very much time to work. But I can tell you this. The time that we do have left, uh, the gospel, the spreading of the gospel is going to be uh, extremely accelerated. The window that we have left to minister in, you're going to see a rapid movement of the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world, globally. You're going to see God move in ways that you've never seen before. I'm looking forward to that because because I know we're a part of it. You see, I want to I want to talk to you tonight about what you believe. What do you believe? You know, what what is it that you really truly believe? Because if we don't believe what God is saying, then it's a waste of time to even be here. But if we really believe what God is saying, then there's a great expectation and an anticipation. Isn't that right? I'm excited about what God is saying because I know that we're close to the end. And I know that, that in this um, exhortation of the word of God, I know that we are part of that. I know that Bible teaches is a part of that. How do I know that? How do I know that? I, I want us to deal with some facts tonight. I want us to deal with some facts. I want us to deal with, with, with what we really do believe uh, <clears throat> relative to what God is saying. I remember when I first got saved, I had a vision. I hadn't been saved that long. And I had a vision. And in this vision, I saw a lady. I knew this, knew of this lady. I had never spoken to her, and she had never spoken to me, but I, I knew who she was, and I saw her in the vision. She did not belong to the same church I belonged to, and, uh, but we had, our church had fellowship with their church, and this lady had been saved a whole lot longer than I had. She had been saved for years, and she had to be probably in her 40s, and I was in my early 20s. Just gotten saved, and I had this vision one night at home. And I saw this lady in the church, and she was walking down the aisle of the church, and she was smoking. She had a cigarette in her hand. She was smoking. And uh, she was drinking. And the Lord told me to go to this lady and tell her that he, he saw her and that she was drinking and she was smoking and that he was not pleased with her. <clears throat> and uh, I said to the Lord, I am not going to tell that lady nothing. <laughs> I remember distinctly saying, I'm not going to tell that lady that. Glory to God. I don't know what that lady, that, you know, you just got saved, and now you're going to go tell someone that's a veteran that the Lord is not pleased with them. And, and this lady was kind of, you know, I, she, she seemed like she just bite your head off or, or knock it off. And so I was just, I, was, I said, I am not doing that. I don't think I'm going to do that. And uh, something happened. We were, we were having some service over there at their church, and I was there at that church. 
And the Lord just, this thing was on me so heavily. She was there that night. After the service, we was outside, and I walked over to the lady. And I said to her, I said, um, uh, I've never done anything like this before. I said, and um, um, and I, I don't mean to offend. I went into all of this, you know. I said, but I had a vision. I saw you in the vision. And I told the lady what I saw, and I told her what the Lord said. And she looked at me, and she said to me, she said, when the Lord tell you something, you don't have to apologize for it. Oh, my God, that freed me. But it didn't just free me for then. It freed me for now. Ever since then, uh, that stayed with me, that when the Lord say something, you don't have to apologize for it. If God truly say it, you don't have to apologize. Um, and you don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to fix it. You, you just say it. You just say what the Lord said. Now, I'm going to say this to you. I'm saying to you that we don't have a whole lot of time. And I'm saying to you that the days of Sapphire and Ananias are back. They are here now. They are here now. They are here now. And I'm also saying to you that the word that God has given us has made us very accountable. We are accountable for these words, for what God is saying. We are accountable for it. Amen? We're, we're accountable for, for what God is saying. Um, God is not giving us all of this revelation just for us. This word is to be taken to the body of Christ. I remember when the Lord pulled me off of one of the major networks and said for me to stay home. I remember he said, that if I continued to go to that network, I would become famous. And people would seek after me. And I'd be traveling all over the place. And I would be known as a great teacher. But I would not have the evidence of what I was teaching. He said, stay home and raise me up a people. And that was 20-something years ago. And I have done that. I have I remained at home and I've raised up a people in this word. Now, I've obeyed God. Why would God tell me to raise him up a people that are the evidence of this word? A people that are the evidence. And see, we're we're blessed. You're you're blessed to know that what you know. You're blessed. But this was a plan of God. This was God's plan before you ever came into Bible teachers. He said, stay home and raise me up a people. Now, he took me off a major television network wherein I could have been very, by now, my goodness, everybody in the world would know my name. Amen. You know, and that's what preachers desire to get. They want to get there. And, uh, but God told me no. He said, no, I, I, I don't want that. I want you to raise me up a people that are a demonstration of this word, proof of the message. Now, <clears throat> I remember the scripture that talked about uh, the keepers of the vineyard, uh, how the master of the vineyard went away and he left, he left the vineyard in the care of caretakers. And he would send his servants to check on it and they would kill his servants. And so he said, well, I'll send my son. Surely they will respect him. And they killed the son too. And the master himself finally came, and he dealt with those unrighteous people. Now, God has left me as a caretaker of his vineyard. And he has, and he, you know, told me what to do. And, and um, I remember saying to the Lord at one point, at one point in this, this journey that we've been on, I said to the Lord, you've given me an impossible task. Your people don't believe you. And um, I said, I can't make these people, I can't, I can't make these people believe I can't I can't bring them to where you want where, where you want to be he said no you can't but I can and I asked him how was he going to do it he said he was going to exalt truth he's going to exalt truth 
Now God has done that in this ministry. He has exalted truth and he's still exalting truth. Now, what does all this mean, mean for you? This means that this was the plan of God before you ever came into Bible teacher. It was God's plan to have himself a people that understood the truth and would walk in the truth. That was his plan from the beginning. Then you stumbled into Bible teachers and you landed right in the middle of that plan. You stayed long enough because a lot of people stumbled in here, but some of them not here now. Some of them not here and, and we need to look at the state of affairs. You need to look at where you are, where you stand inside of this because there are several types of people in a church. Some, some of these people, you know, every, every, everyone that came through Bible teachers, everyone that, 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 has, that God has allowed to hear this word and understand it, they were given the opportunity to be a part of this end time movement. That's what it's all about, to be a part of what God is doing in the end time. Now, let me tell you something. If you're alive today and you are not one of those that are going to be a part of God's end time movement, then you're lost. It just simply means he can't use you. And if God can't use you to be a blessing to the world, he can't use you to, to be a part of his, his uh, redemption plan, then that means that you yourself, are, you're lost. That's what that means. So that's why it's time for us to take inventory. The scriptures say examine yourself to see if you're actually in the faith. Now what's very disturbing is the reality that a lot of people have been through Bible teachers. A lot of people. And this, this message is not just for uh, Jamaica. This message is for the entire body uh, called Bible teachers. A lot of people have been through here. And, and some of those people stayed several years. And they heard, <clears throat> they heard truth during those years. They heard truth. And that truth changed their lives. It changed their lives. And if they, if, if, if you were to talk to them, if you, if you had talked to them while they were here, they would say to you, this word changed their life. How many people got that testimony? Because that's what's important. You got to be following, you, ha you must follow the word of God. You must follow Jesus, not Mary Banks. You got to be following his word, amen, and uh, his ways. Now, a lot of people, if you had talked to some of those people that come and went, while they were here, they would have said, yes, this word, the, the, the word here is powerful. The word is rich. The word is, has changed my life. didn't leave an offense. Some people just relocated. Some, you know, some people just, you know, moved on. But, um, but when we talk about people that leave inside of offense, you know, people that are offended for whatever the reasons are, uh, or they move into sin and they find themselves back in the world, that doesn't change that their their state, their disposition, the disposition they're in at that point when they leave does not change what took place before they left. That's what I want you to see. It doesn't change the fact that God visited them while they were here and that they, un they heard the word and they understood the word. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, that's what is being judged. The word that they heard. See, it doesn't matter. I, I want to I wanna, I wanna show you the mind of God. I want to show you how God's mind works. If, you, if your testimony tonight, just for the last three years, if your testimony is, boy, God has really blessed me. This word has been so awesome. How many people got that testimony? This word has changed my life. What has changed your life? Not Mary Banks, but the word. Is that right? 
The word has changed your life. The word has you now reaching out to God. Is that right? The word has you reaching out to God. Now, if supposing I lay an offense, supposing I become an, off an offender, and I offend the ministry in some way. Yesterday, let's say yesterday I offended the ministry. Laid a tremendous offense. I don't know what it is, but some offense. And, and everybody just upset because I laid this offense. Because number one, because of who I am, it would, be, it would have a tremendous effect, right? It would have because of who I am, because, because I'm your leader. And um, you'll be very disappointed, right? And sad. But the question is, would that change what has taken place in you the last three years? You understand what I'm saying? Would that change? And see, th this, is, this is something that, this is how God judges a matter. See, this is how God judges a matter. Regardless of what offenses come, God is going to judge your response to it. I need you to understand that. He's going to judge your response, whether that offense come in your house, whether it come in your church, whether it come on your job, come to you personally. God is going to judge your response to that offense. And how is he going to judge that? He's going to judge it based upon what he know has been the effectual work of grace in your life. Remember in um, Ephesians, I believe it's Ephesians, the third chapter. I, I think that's one of the scriptures. Um, <clears throat> uh, Paul said uh, in at Ephesians 3 and 7. Were you there? He says, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by what? The effectual working of his power. So what is he saying? He's saying that this, the, the word of God has had an effect on him. Notice what he says, the gift to the gift of the grace of God given unto me. And what is grace? Grace. 